Hello, everybody. In this video, we'll be talking about simple and composite and compound keys. These are categories of keys. So like when you define a database, you can say, all right, this is a primary key, or you can say this is a foreign key. But you don't have to say, oh, this is a natural, simple, primary key. Like those are just categories. You don't have to define that within our database. So these, these terms that we're learning are more for design sake, so you know the best design for your database, but you don't actually have to define it, right? Like for example, this piece of chalk right here, you can define this as a white piece of chalk. Now what kind of white piece of chalk is it? Well, it's X brand or whatever. You don't have to define that when you're telling someone, oh, here's a piece of chalk. That was the worst example ever. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Simple and composite. Okay, so. Simple means that the key consists of one column. Composite means it consists of two or more columns. This is most common with natural keys because natural keys can be a combination of multiple columns, whereas a surrogate key is just a random number, one column. So surrogate keys are simple. Composite keys are multiple columns. So for example, we could have a uh, first name plus last name plus uh, email. This could be an example of a composite key because this whole group as a whole is the primary key. So we could have Jim, Jake, and uh, Legit, or Awesome, or whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then we could have another, another one with the same exact name, Jim, Jake and we could have a different email. Well, these two are still separate, they're unique because the combination of the three are unique. Jim and Jake repeat, but the email is different. So these as a whole are different values for primary keys. So that's an example of a composite primary key. The reason is, is because it consists of three columns. One, two, three. This is an example of a composite key. A composite natural key to be specific because we're just we're using things that are already naturally being stored within our database. Now let's think of a simple key. A natural one or well, username would be a good one. Because the nat uh, username can be something that can be used by itself as a key. It's simple because it's only one column. Pretty simple, I know. Huh. All right. So, I want to talk about another term you might run into. And that is compound. Okay, now, I want to clarify that some people in some relational database management systems don't clarify the difference between these two composite and compound terms, and they just use them interchangeably as meaning a key with multiple columns. Some people go a step farther and break these up into two separate terms. So we're going to be defining both of the terms, but you might see them used interchangeably. So don't be so super technical about the details, and don't be like correcting people. Oh, hold up, that ain't a composite key, that's a compound key. Duh. Because most people are just going to look at you like you're an idiot and not really care. Alright, so anyways, moving on. A compound key is basically when it's a uh, call. It's a key that has multiple columns, and they're all keys themselves. So this is a, the most common example of this is for intermediary tables. So think about it like this: if we have a a table used to store information about videos, we could say it's a video table. We could also have another table over here. We could have a user table. Actually, here, let's, let's do it this way. We're going to have a comments table, okay? And then within this comments table, we could have a column of what video they're commenting on. You see, well, this is a many-to-many -many relationship, right? So, this, this uh, might not work out well with database design because one user can comment on multiple videos and then uh, one video 
can have comments from multiple people. So the best way to do this, rather than having two separate tables like this, we would create video table, and then we'd have an intermediary table, and this would be video comments or user comments. You see what I'm saying? So we get a connection between the user and the video to create an intermediary table. And it's split up with two keys. So we have the, the user ID and then the uh, video ID. And then we could have another column for the uh, message or the date or whatever else. Well, you can see, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go see my videos over designing many-to-many -many relationships. Um, but otherwise, if you do know what I'm talking about, moving on. You can see that the entire key itself, every user and video ID combination has to be unique. That might, uh, that might be a bad example because a user could comment on the same video more than once. So, this is probably not the best example. Um, let me think of a good one. But anyways, this would be an example of a, we could add another column in here to make it unique. We could have the date and the message. So the message has to be unique, and the user ID has to be unique, and the video ID has to be unique. That would be a composite key. A, compo a compound key, uh, let me think of an example real quick. So a good example of this would be for college. We could have a user, we could have a student, student table. And we could have a class table, right? So this table holds information about the student. This information table holds information about the class. Now, how do we show enrollment? Should we make columns for every student here? No, because it's a many-to-many -many relationship. That means we need an intermediary table between the two. So this is a good example. Sorry about my bad example in the last one, but that's a good example of a composite key because the two columns themselves wouldn't be enough, so we'd have to add another one, which is not a key in itself. But for this one, we could have a column. We'll, we'll name the table uh, student classes, or just student class, whatever you want to call it. Student classes, and within here, we could have the IDs, student ID, and class ID. Now, this combination between student ID and class ID uh, must be unique. So let's say we have uh, the values 7 and 4, um, 7 and 6, 7 and 7, that would work. But if we had something like 7 and 4 again, we would get an error because that's already in there and that's not going to work out so well. So the combination has to be unique. And these are also both foreign keys which point to uh, another table. So both of them are keys and the primary key is compounded because we have the student ID and the class ID as one giant ID or one giant key I should say because the combination has to be unique. We can repeat seven on this side and we can repeat like six on this side but we can't repeat the combination of seven and six. They have to be unique as a whole. So composite keys, that's when you have at least one is, a, uh, is not a key in itself. For compound, they all have to be keys. So for the composite, let's look back at the, um, the example we gave in the last one with the videos, the video comments. Let's say this is the intermediary table blown up just so we can see it real big. This is the user ID, and then we have the, uh, the video ID. Well, this isn't sufficient to make uniqueness because a user could comment on the same video more than once. Like if you're replying to comments or something like that. So we need another column. We could add uh, the, a timestamp, or we could just say, uh, the time column and this is going to keep a unique time because you can't comment on the same video at exactly the same time twice right so that would ensure uniqueness so we can ensure these three as a whole are unique that's an example of a composite key because at least one column is not a key in itself 
This is a key because it points to a user's table. This is a key because it points to a video's table. This is not a key because it's just a column for that intermediary table. So that, those are the uh, three terms I want to talk about in this video. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about real quick. I'm not going to say what the best technique is for this. I'm just going to say what some people do. With an intermediary table, some people will give it a surrogate key on top of the uh, compound key. So for example, with the college, I keep switching back and forth between examples, I'm probably confusing you. They might add something such as uh, enrollment ID, and then we have the uh, student ID, and then we have the class ID. These are both foreign keys, and they might use this enrollment ID as a um, just a surrogate key for this table, although it's not a requirement for uh, certain relational database management systems. Some relational database management systems or frameworks or something are not going to be able to work well with uh, composite or com compound keys, so you might need to have a simple key, which in that case you could still have the idea of a compound key. This group right here, the student in the class, you can have that indexed or whatever you want, or you can just enforce uniqueness with that. But then you can use an enrollment ID, so you could have like seven, and then you could have student six in the class four, and then you could have eight with the student four in class 12, and then you can have nine with the uh, student 16 in class four, and then we could have 10 with uh, student 16 in class 12, and so forth. That's just an example of what some people do. Uh, I'm leaving that up to you, and we'll just see what I do up in this other series, uh, up in the future parts of this series. So yeah, hopefully that was useful. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.